Let me tell you a story. This Christmas Eve, rather than being at home, being a good wife and mother and baking some stuff with my husband, as he was doing, God bless him, I was running all over Melbourne trying to find a tattooist who would tattoo me that very moment with these words. What if there is no problem? And why did I need that to happen right there in that moment? Do we see the wild instinctive woman in me was this crazed obsessed idea, this Christmas present to myself that I had to have as my house was about to be filled with all the people who I love but those who push my buttons the most, who bring me into self-doubt the most. I knew I needed to embody this mantra that I've been working with for so many years now. What if there is no problem? When I first heard these words or this idea occurred to me, it was like my brain melted with recognition. I have spent my whole life pathologizing myself. I've spent my whole life making me a problem that if I can figure out the magic solution, that if I can solve me, that all my relationships will start working. I'll be the perfect weight. I'll be the perfect mother. I'll have all that I need. My career will go through the roof. All of these things are a false economy. I am not a problem to be fixed. And when I started to work with that idea that I'm not a problem, that in fact my life is not a problem and the things that happen to me are not problems that I need to solve, but rather this, they are life happening. I am my life happening. I am my life happening in this very moment. And when I started to really understand that, I started to experience my self-worth. If I'm not a problem to be fixed, then I must be good just as I am. I must be perfect just as I am. Kat Stroud said it recently, in a society that profits from our self-doubt, loving ourself is the most radical thing that we can do. So I moved out of this belief that somehow I was broken and needed to be fixed, that my life was broken and that the things in it reflected that brokenness and into the knowing that my intuitive wild self, my inner knowing, my crazy, beautiful, get tattooed on Christmas Eve self was perfect just as she was. And when your fear and your self-doubt and your anxiety comes up about your own lack of perfection or you find yourself obsessing about the things that ultimately don't matter, I want you to practice this. There is this thing called heart rate variability. The slower our heart beat, the bigger the gap between our heartbeats, the more we move into connection with our intuition, with our knowing, with our truth. And ultimately, we move into our fearlessness because that is what it is to be in our self-worth. We are fearless. We cannot be told that we are not good enough and we can't tell ourselves that anymore. So I want you to practice this technique if you feel your fear or your anxiety or your self-doubt coming up. Breathe in four parts. Breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. And just practice that five minutes a day. It doesn't matter where you are. Some people might call it meditation. I'm just going to call it slowing down your heart rate. This will change your life. In that gap between your heartbeat resides your fearlessness. Because that is where you meet your wild, intuitive, worthful, knowing self. You are not a problem to be fixed. I am not a problem to be fixed. I love you, dear ones.